What's up guys, this is The Power of Mushroom, and here I am with a review, finally, for the game Shadow of War. Now, um, it's... Shadow of, Shadow of War is a sequel to 2014 Shadow of Mordor, so it's been a good minute since Shadow of Mordor has come out. Um, I'm kind of glad they took their time with it, and I mean... There's a lot of questions that people have been asking me. The most important one, I've had a few questions. There's the most important one right now is do the microtransactions ruin the game? And if you guys just want me to answer that, you know, I'm going to just answer for you guys right now. Yes and no. And and I will get into a why. So let me just start off real quick about the gameplay. This is probably not going to be a long video review like uh, my previous one. Just because I have so much games I need to get caught up on. There's just so much. It's broke over. So... I'm feeling the wrath of Broketober. So, yeah, anyways. Uh, so, Shadow of War, it takes place immediately after Shadow of Mordor. Shadow of Mordor, you know, at the very end, you know, I'm not going to spoil that for you guys. But anyways, the point is, it takes place right after Shadow of Mordor. So, if you guys are thinking like, hey, should I play Shadow of Mordor before I get Shadow of War? Yeah, you should, probably should play Shadow of Mordor. Especially because Shadow of Mordor is such an awesome game. And, I mean, in this one, they kind of give you a little bit of flashback to kind of catch you up on everything that, you know, happened. But, for the most part, I really think to get the most out of this game, you need to play Shadow of Mordor first on the same console. So, like, make sure you have Shadow of Mordor, then jump right into Shadow of War. That you can get the best out of it. And here's why. Because the Nemesis system is so well thought out in this game, it is a thousand times better than it was in Shadow of Mordor. This game, almost everything that was wrong with Shadow of Mordor, they improved on, they built upon it. The world is a lot, is a lot, lot more bigger. It's huge. If you guys read, have read the books of like Lord of the Rings, the Cimmerillion, and all that stuff, you are gonna enjoy this game. People are, who are, people who are really into the Lord of the Rings, you guys are gonna love this game like because it just builds upon lore that has never been mentioned in the Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. That are only in the books, you know what I mean? So you're probably gonna enjoy it. And then there's those people that probably will hate it because towards the end of the game they kind of switch a little bit of things around in the lore that doesn't make sense. So it's not really canon to the movies. But overall it's a great game. Everything that Shadow of Mordor set, this one built upon it, made it better, bigger. It's just everything I could have wanted for a sequel to Shadow of Mordor. Um there's there's a lot of locations that will seem very familiar to you from the movies. Um, just just the atmosphere in the in the game. The boss battles were definitely a step up, like in this game. In Shadow of Mordor, the boss battles were kind of like, eh, they weren't good, but they weren't bad either. In this one, I, I think they were a lot better. Granted, there's probably some people will think, oh, they're just quick time events, but you're still kind of fighting in real time combat, if you know what I mean. Like you're fighting real time combat, then. And sometimes you're fighting some of Sauron's forces or whatever, and you have to press triangle to block them and stuff. I don't, it's a cool battle. Like, I love those battles that they have with him. And then there's one battle in the game I'm not going to ruin, but it, it's just so epic because I did not see that coming. I didn't think I was going to be able to see, like, play out that battle. But there's a part in Act 2 where you get to fight a certain monster, and it's just it's pretty cool. You'll enjoy it. Um, building an army is probably the main focus is of this game. Really, this is kind of like the bromance between human and orcs. So you go in there and you kind of like, you become bros with these orcs and you just kind of, you know, you train, not train them, but you send them into battle, help them get stronger and stuff. And really you build your own army. And when you build your army in this game, you build an army. In Shadow of Mordor, you had your army kind of, but in this one, it's just kind of like, you build your army and it just gets, huge i'm telling i'm telling you guys like if you ever wanted to live out of battle like the lord of the rings movies or the hobbit movies like this is the game it feels exactly like the movies because you sometimes you have drakes coming down and spewing fire at everybody sometimes you'll have uh you know just orcs just calling you out you'll have your nemesis come back from a previous game in the battlefield you'll be taking over forwards throwing like overthrowing overlords in the game it's just it's amazing it's an amazing experience especially if you have your nemesis from the original shadow of mordor the game just care it just carries right over uh you know your nemesis and it's probably one of the best feelings ever 
Not only that, like, I mean, the Nemesis system, like I said, it's really built upon him because these orcs, they remember everything you do. They remember if you betrayed them. They remember if, you know, you just didn't help them out in a battle. If they were on the ground and they were bleeding out and you didn't help them, they're going to remember that type of stuff. All that stuff that you, your relationship with the orc, it means a lot in this game. And really, I didn't expect me to get so, like, kind of close together with these, these characters because these orcs, they have a lot of character built in them. That's what this game like really built upon was just the orcs you and your orc being the bros in battle and it's just it's crazy with the type of stuff that they come up with they, they see some pretty freaking hilarious lines in the game and props to like the, the producers and the directors like all the voice actors you guys did a really good job like just creating your own characters with these orcs and there's a bunch of them the like i said you know orcs can betray you they will betray you if you don't treat them right or if you just you're not a good leader they can betray you like i was i was fighting this one guy and then out of nowhere the orc he just turned on me like that and like he just stabs me in the back and i'm just like the heck and then of course then he becomes my nemesis we start fighting and all that he becomes my nemesis he ends up killing me over and over and over and over again and over time you see these battles you'll you'll beat down these orcs you might not be able to kill these captains or whatever but when you kill them or you you know kind of beat them and they retreat they'll come back with like battle scars or like just pieces of metal this one orc i cut his arm off and then he comes like later on in the game i totally forgot about him but he comes back and he calls me out for cutting his arm off and then on his arm it's just like a wooden like stub with like to hold his sword and i'm just like did they actually do that and yeah th these orcs remember all that stuff they remember everything that you've done for them and I like i said that's really cool i really enjoyed it it felt like i was living in an actual lord of the rings movie that's how good it felt combat time this time around it's really similar to batman arkham asylum just like the previous shadow of mordor there's really nothing different um, I did play on the Nemesis mode, so I did have, I did have to grind a little bit, and it, it was just, it was a little hard. Um, there are some things that I had problems with, like, there were some glitches in the game where, like, sometimes I'd get stuck on a ledge, sometimes I would just, you know, I'd try running, and I'd just get stuck places. That stuff happens. It didn't happen a lot, but it happened a few times. I didn't get no crashes on the PlayStation 4 version. I know PC users, you guys have been experiencing some crashes, um... Also, the, there's some there were some parts where like, not not the story. It's not that it, it's not good, but there's a lot to do in the world that I got sidetracked, and I was just kind of like, oh yeah, I have, I have a story I gotta finish, and I'll go do the story. Um, so uh, the story doesn't really pull you in like the other one, but I mean it's still there. I still enjoy the story for what it is, but like I said, I got really sidetracked, and I ended up doing other things. Um, Another thing that I guess that kind of pissed me off a little bit was sometimes <clears throat> when you're playing, again with glitches, uh, you, like, you get stuck in places and not only that, there was one point where I did have to restart my game because I got stuck on a wall. But that happened one time out of like the 95 hours I've played of this game. So other than that, all the other times I've been, been able to get myself out of these places. Uh, then there's a lot of collectibles. This thing, this game is packed with content. It is really packed with content. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get to straight to the point about microtransactions. They're in the game, yes. Do you need them? No. They, they were so easy to ignore for the in, almost the entirety of the game. Almost the entirety. The reason I say that is because towards the end of the game, I, I was playing the game and all that, and now, you know, you get to the last battle, and these bat like to get the true ending in the game, you have to grind, and I'm pretty sure everybody's heard about this from news sources that you do have to grind, it's a long grind, you're going to have to buy loot boxes. You don't have to buy loot boxes, but you are going to have to grind. And one thing my friend was telling me is that the, the fun part about Shadow Mortar was the grinding and kind of building up your army in the last Shadow of Mortar. And I can get, I get that, you know? For me, I don't mind the grind. I personally do not mind the grind because the game is a lot of fun. I still get collectibles while I'm doing the grind. I recruit new captains and stuff like that. And I can send in spies and do all that, you know, like kind of make it faster a little bit. But they added these loot boxes in there to where, like, it's really tempting because when you buy, don't buy loot boxes at the beginning of the game. Please don't. You'll screw yourself over. Uh, because the loot boxes give you armor and stuff, even if they're legendary. Uh, same to your level. So if you're like level 10, you're going to get like level 10 armor and stuff like that. Uh, the loot boxes are probably like, if you get any, you can enter in game and all that stuff through challenges and the online multiplayer. Online multiplayer is more like the, you build your base and like 
army. It's kind of like Metal Gear Solid 5 multiplayer where your base is online and people can invade it and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you get stuff, you know, for your level and towards the end of the game. It's kind of tempting because these battles are back to back to back to back to back to back. And it's just, it's kind of like, okay, when is this going to end? Because it's really tempting to just buy the loot boxes, get the advanced captains, and then just go into battle. You could basically just do that if you wanted to. Just build your army by buying loot boxes towards the end of the game. Especially on how slow you level up, you're probably going to want those experience boosts. Let me just tell you guys straight up, don't do it. Don't ruin the game for yourself. Don't do that. Just play the game the way it's meant to be played. It's fine if it's grinding, if you're grinding for a little bit or whatever. It's not... To me personally, I didn't have a problem because it was a lot of fun doing it. But for other people... I do see where they can buy the loot boxes and that's a problem for a lot of people so definitely watch out for that. Um, that really that's my biggest problem was the loot boxes. There was no reason really to even put them in there like like I said I didn't need them at all. I went through almost the entire game without even needing any of them. Like I did not need to touch those loot boxes but for other people who were like have a lot of time on their hands, not a lot, they have a limited amount of time on their hands, they're real busy with work and stuff, you guys are probably going to want to buy that but don't do it, please don't. Um, so yeah, I mean overall, I mean Shadow of War, it's a decent sequel, it's definitely worthy. The ending, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know how to, I can explain the ending, but just, just play the game. You're going to have more fun with the base game than you would with anything. And the story is fine, the characters, the voice acting is really good. The graphics are amazing too, like they, they really updated the graphics, it looks really cool. Um, and the, the combat's way smoother, there's more moves, and the perk tree is like more, there's more stuff on the perk tree and stuff like that. And I've only scratched the surface of what you can do, I just want to get this review out, that way people can know what they're getting themselves into. Because um, otherwise, I'm still kind of going through the game, there's a lot of stuff in the game. But, definitely guys, it, is it worth your $60? Yeah, I think it's worth your $60. There's a lot of stuff in this game, collectibles and all that crap, and it's like the encyclopedia to the Lord of the Rings universe and stuff. It's all there. But if you guys don't want the loot boxes or you guys are kind of like, eh, maybe I'll wait, go ahead and wait. If you can wait, go ahead. But if you can't and you're like, oh, I really want to play this game, but I'm not sure if the loot boxes ruin it, I'm telling you right now, loot boxes don't really ruin it for like the, almost the entirety of the game. It's towards the end where you're kind of like, oh, okay, it's messed up. But then... Then again, you're grinding a lot through the game and kind of getting captains. It's not that repetitive, at least in my opinion. Other people might say it is, but I didn't find it a problem. Me personally, I did not find it a problem at all. And I really think that there's a lot to be enjoyed. I want to tell you guys to buy the game, but then a part of me is saying, don't let them buy the game because the microtransactions might ruin it for them. And like I said, for me, microtransactions didn't really matter. For other people, it might. So if you have a lot of time on your hands, Pick it up. If you guys don't have a lot of time on your hands and you're kind of like, but I don't really want to grind that much, well then, I'd say just hold off a little bit and you can buy it later when it's on sale or something, but let me tell you, you guys won't regret it. If you do decide to buy it or you buy it on sale, whatever, just don't buy the microtransactions. Don't support something like that. That way they can get rid of it in the future if they make a third game. So, anyways, yeah, that's my review for Shadow of War. It's it's really in between for me like I can't I can't recommend it but I can't tell you to you know not buy it I'm like in between that's the weird part but I really me personally I really enjoyed it and yeah that's really much it so anyways have you guys played Shadow of War I mean if you guys have tell me what's your thoughts about it do you think guys should buy it people should buy it or whatever I mean leave your comments down below on whether you think someone else should buy the game because really I think that if people watch my review and then they can see the comments kind of like get more opinions just like that real fast, I mean, I think that'd be good for them to kind of get a better opinion on the game. So if you guys have an opinion, please drop it down below. I can see both sides of this coin where people don't want to buy it because it has microtransactions, they don't want to support it. That's fine, but I can also see where people want to buy it because it's real awesome. That's fine too. I liked it, so that's just me. It's just probably this is the weirdest games I've ever reviewed because I don't want to support it, but then again, it's really cool, so, uh, yeah. Anyways, that's pretty much it, guys. If I put gameplay up here, I am, hopefully I did, but my computer's been acting up, so, probably not. If there's gameplay, it's gonna be right here. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, and remember, guys, like, comment, subscribe, upvote if you're watching on Vidme, and, as always, guys, remember when you're gaming, power up.